We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. To my sweet, your kiss ever pure in the summer heat and your Latin eyes. You're deep in my soul in the silent spell. You take me beyond any sensual, you mystify. Shadowed light and we love in the fears of the lily whites as we talk to dawn. Can't find the words that can measure this. The deeper we go in a state of bliss as we Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to See It Clearly. I'm your host, Michael Carson. We're here on LA Talk Live. Today's show is brought to you by Fit in Seconds. Fit in Seconds is the first pre meal workout that you can get directly online and have videos sent. Right to your phone, your tablet, and computer, and every single meal, you can actually force your body to lose between one and three ounces of unwanted fat. And that's what's bringing you the show today. But today we have an, a remarkable show. We've got a, a gentleman that uh, I've known for a little while and been listening to a lot. I mean, this this is your song. We're listening to Crave You off your album called Untame the Songs. And today we're sitting here with G. Tom Mack, a.k.a. Gerard McMahon. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good, mate. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so good. glad to have you in studio today. Well, it's my delight. Yeah, this is one of those those days where um, there's going to be too much information to cram into one hour, and I'm going to be bouncing back and forth a bit. But uh, the thing that I, I, that I find interesting about you, and I'm very curious about how songwriters and people who create work because I used to work for a brief, very briefly in production where I was a coordinator for music and videos and I'd find oh the yeah. music and put the video but I didn't write the songs right. so it's a whole different thing but for you I think there's a recipe here and the recipe is you were born in Birmingham, England that's right yeah and you spent Aussie territory yeah yeah so, so you're, yeah. you're <laughs> exactly and you, you, you're with, with the crazy man uh, did you meet him when you were there? no but all those guys lived very close to me in Wolverhampton which is right up the road from where we live uh, Robert Plant, who I met later, mm -hmm. but he lived. I literally could have walked to his house in five minutes, but I was much younger than him. Well, so not, not that much younger. Than so, him. so, so we're putting this recipe together, right? And, and, and the start of it is you know, being born in that part of the world. Yes, it, right. The texture and the time that you were born, the yeah. time when music was becoming the energy of the whole country and, and, and Britain, Great Britain in well, general. Well, when I was born, the war had just <laughs> been over <laughs> for 10 years. So Are you talking about the, go the Gulf War? Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Well, I mean, England took a long time to get back together after the war, uh, uh, the World War II. Yeah. I mean, a long time before its economy got... I mean, it was, it was a mess. We got bombed, you know? Right. And right. Uh, I wasn't around for that. But, you know, it's interesting where music did take place, where, I mean... Liverpool, Birmingham, and obviously London as well. But the North and the Midlands, which is Birmingham, um, that's where we um, had nothing else to do but figure out how to um, make noise um, right. and, and um, please ourselves, you know? Well, and the thing is, too, is that there's, there's photography and there are things that era that, being an American, that I would see that have a texture to it that I could only wonder what it was like, but that was your first... Uh, we had a, a, a person here last week that was talking about your original download to your soul. That's your original download is from that part of the world. But, yeah, then, but then you jump the puddle. Good way to put it. You jump the puddle and you go to New York City when you're 11 years old, one of the most uh, creative times in a young man's life when he's becoming a man, in, in essence. You know, you're getting to puberty and all of a sudden things that are right in front of you aren't as interesting as everything else that's around you. And now you're in this metropolis where there's a whole nother download that occurs. And, and that's something yeah. that not many people get before age 13. Uh, 
to, to get that, but then you moved to the Midwest. Yeah, well, I was putting my toys away about age 11. Uh-huh. Uh, getting exactly. Getting to New York and figuring out what the new toys were. And right. Then, and then um, I was getting a bit of wood from looking at a girl, and I said, oh, I'm growing, I guess I am growing up. <laughs> uh, and then, but music was a big part of my family, in, you know, even before moving to America and to New York City, and uh, it was a mad idea. My dad been from Ireland. Always wanted to move to New York, and he thought it'd be good for my brother and myself. And uh, so we uh, ended up there, and music did begin there. And then we ended up, yeah, my dad got a job in the middle of America, Wichita, Kansas, and we gave it a go there. And um, it was, New York was great because it was, you know, it was a melting pot of creativity and the arts and just everything. There's that Sting song, An Englishman in New York, and it's it's like, do you... Yeah, there's it's a sophistic- the grown-up version. Well, yeah, you're, and you're sophistic- there's a sophistication that... Um, that exists when you go from that type of a situation to a New York situation. Right. New York, you can't be a little kid. You have to sort of, st- you, you can't, you're not allowed to be a little kid. <laughs> right, yeah, well, it's, it's a very, um, there's a lot of uh, obstacles and uh, personalities that are right in your face. And, right. you know, I mean, it was a different time then, obviously, in New York, but it was still the, the mad state of New York City and everything that it is, has always offered, you know. And what, and, and what you've done, though, uh, for most of your career is you've created music and imagery and emotion for other people's works too yeah and having that ability to morph yourself from country to country to countryside and and see all these different textures and genres gives you an opportunity that a lot of people don't ever get they have to fake that yeah, it's you know, kind of like a psychology m- interview here. Yeah, right, well, yeah no, I'm well, figure, I'm, I'm, I'm now going to myself. Oh my God, maybe that's why I can write for many different people because I've been many places at an early exactly. age. Exactly. Well, and, and that's exactly why. And that's you why have other a ca- people. You have a couch it. here. Yes, <laughs> that's what we do actually. But there's someone actually already oh. they're medicated on it from the last show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, what, that's what you do to people here, do we're, you? We're here to help. <laughs> right. Um, but but yeah, so so in seeing that you know you've in people th- in case you don't know um Ger- gerard has been someone who in g tom mac um i want to know what became from gerard mcmahon to g tom mac i mean th- th- there was a change that occurred and, and it happened at a time when you were disenchanted with the industry a little bit right. and we want to get to so what caused that but why the name change and and um i like it but, but but explain that for me well it's not like it went from bruce jenner to caitlin never um no thank god no, it's the same no that's not I, I think that's <laughs> brilliant actually no but it's, it's uh, brave uh, enough it, it was it's kind of it was a big deal done. in the sense that um you know your identity of my for, of my name but nobody could ever bloody well pronounce my name and it and it was around 99 actually li- much late in the game i'd already mm. had three albums out but under uh, you know gerard gerard mcmahon yeah. and by that time uh, I just said, you know, if I'm doing this, I, it's sort of a, it was a bit of a reinventing as well because I kind of just hadn't done an album on my own for a while. I was so writing, as you mentioned, writing for other people for the longest time. Yeah. Kind of got, oh, God, it was just, you know, it was, I was sort of the critic's darling making all those albums on the road, you know, beat up, et cetera, and I just said, you know, I've had enough at that point. And by the time 99 came around, I wanted to make a new album. I thought I'm going to call it G-Tom Mac, which is Ger- Gerard Thomas McMahon. Mm-hmm. And it made would make it easier for people to remember. Now, some people could say that's a suicide, you know, you, you, people, you have history, especially with the films I've done and all that stuff. But I just thought, like, let's start fresh, and it was it was a, an incredible. How does it affect your your royalties from songs that were under Gerard? Uh, oh no, that, that's all done so on so a, on proper form, meaning it, like it. It, you know, I still go by legal legalities, but mm-hmm. yeah, you know, even on my record, even on the, the credits, it always says written by Gerard McMahon. You know, it doesn't say written by G. Tom Mack. But I just sort of, it was a sense of reinventing, and it made it easier for people. It's an easier name to remember. I mean, my name was horrible to have to, to you know. I, if it had been announced on the radio multiple amounts of times, I think people would have gotten into it. But I didn't have that but good But they, they remember Nicole Schlesinger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so well, you know, I know. It's a different world now, though. It's, 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 in, it's, it's typed in, tweet, tweeted in, in Facebook yeah, so 40 times a but day. But it's still easier to pronounce. I mean, it, I mean, when I was a child going to school it, in America, they would say, Gerald McMahon. And I'm going like, who's that? <laughs> you know? And, um, but... Um, yeah, so it, it, it's worked out. People have caught up. They know who do you, you know, they, it all got figured out. Yeah, I wrote this, these songs in movies, and especially Lost Boys, which is... Well, and it, and it made me think for a second, is there, because um, you know, David Bowie was a big influence when, when you were young, and the Beatles, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I would even think um, that him taking on Zoe 
Bowie and being, or not Zoe Bowie, being. Uh, f- well, his original name was David Jones. You know that, right? I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Oh. But he had t- he would assume characters. For, yeah. For oh, lengths yeah. of time that, um, and so I thought maybe that maybe G. Tom Mac and Gerard were two different sides of you that were that wrote differently and that uh, performed mm. differently. Well, I write differently a lot, but I, you know, one of the biggest. Um, bones of contention with me was that I was always writing I could never get my own album to focus be one sound and really took a lot to do that because I'm mm. constantly writing you know I always like but what's wrong with that the there's is nothing it, wrong with is that is I've made a lot of money doing yeah, that yeah I think because th- I think that's great because I, th- I like to, to have it almost tells a story through the, the, the album better than a single mood that people well, try to know, create the, you know? the quintessential Artist did that did that was the Beatles. You know, I mean, yeah. they would make a record, and it was all you know, it was, it was you know, multi-faceted, you know, songwriting into sounds, etc. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, for the rest of us, we everybody wanted a wants a cohesive sound, which most people can do naturally, mm-hmm. but not me. Um, I have re- I have to work on being me. You know, um, even though I know me. But I have a hard time getting myself to just focus. In, you know, I mean, I'll write 30 songs for my own uh, record wow. to get it. How down do you to choose? 10. Yeah, it must be hard to choose. Well, which it's child to? Uh, yeah. Well, I think having a sounding board like a producer always says, "No, nah, that's not really right for you." You know, I mean, mm. you, I can understand why you have to have it focused as an artist. I do yeah. understand that. But Untamed the Songs, as you just mentioned, was an album that I really went back to doing, just kind of like. Uh, you know, just mixed it up a bit where the songwriting took over as opposed to the artist. But, uh, you know, I'm in there. Well, there's a song we're going to play when we return from the first commercial from that album as well that I just, we're going to, you're going to look forward to this one uh, to listen to. It just has uh, so much energy to it. You can, it, it woke me up several times for workouts, for, 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 for moments of just needing. A so bit of you're saying I'm useful then? Very useful. And, in the, and, you know, the message in it is, you know, you're, you're tormented in your head there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> the torment is, is, is but it's still, I kind of love it. It's, it's like a rock driving torment. If you're a CrossFitter, this is a great song for you. It'll, it'll get you up that extra muscle up that you need to get to. That's that's good. Don't you think? You know, but yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, the, I'm with that. Absolutely, but you you have worked with so many artists and and helped create with artists. But there are a couple guys you've also worked with that are bigger than all those artists. I mean, we can talk about Robert Plant and Roger Daltrey and Ice Cube and and Kiss and all those people. But when it comes to super producers like Jerry Bruckheimer, oh, film producers and yeah. David Geffen, music producers, mm-hmm. you've worked with both of these guys. I did. Well, you know, David basically both of those two guys gave me my first break I mean a uh, younger Jerry Bruckheimer hired me to do it was he ever young I thought he was like he's always been uh, the same age he still thinks he's young <laughs> yeah. yeah oh I'm sorry Jerry actually yeah, you're listening way. Jerry I there think you you're young too there goes CSI Pittsburgh New York I guess God, I yeah, what that. a career damn um, <laughs> but um, yeah I, uh, when I first came to Los Angeles in the early 80s um, he had a movie called Defiance it was one of the first films he was really doing it was with Jan Michael Vincent and everybody <laughs> of that cast went on to be in the Sopranos <laughs> just about but yeah. anyway um, you know he heard some music of mine um, through my manager and then we uh, he said um, we'll have him write the main song to open up the movie and I did and uh, it was a very street movie defiance it was around that period of time when films like Warriors you know and yeah. that kind of stuff were Come big to play, yeah. Yeah. yeah so he um and do they give you the imagery first, or do you have to create the music well without I mean seeing only seeing the script and, and the no, idea? No, well I w- watched the film, okay. and then I got a vibe for it. But I was only asked to open it. This is the first time I'd ever been able, ha- w- given the opportunity to write a main song, to uh, uh, for, or a song, for that matter, for a movie. So I took it away, the film. They gave me a little video, a little VHS or whatever, to look at again. And then I... Um, went away and wrote the song a song called Bad Times and then Jerry loved it and he said have him write three more songs he says he's got the voice for the movie and and I thought they'd get somebody else to sing it and then um, but then I ended up being the voice of that movie and it was uh, oh, wow. kind of a cult little B film that went on to have some yeah it was weird it was yeah, I had no idea how and this you, is pre what kind TV. of money you made or I you know yeah. I was three months I remember being three months behind my my rent, and I <laughs> said to my manager, "Is there any chance I can possibly get a little bit of money to get going?" He said, "Oh yeah, I got you." I thought he said, 
eight grand for the whole film. And I said, oh man, I've never seen eight grand before. <laughs> so I go over to the office and he said, well, they give me a check that said 80 grand. You know? Oh my so God. I'm going, like, are you joking here? This is the work for hire kind of thing. Did you cry? Um, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was, you know, Cause that's could a have wet that myself. That's life changing money at the time. Yeah, I mean, well, I wrote four or five songs for the film, but I had no idea in the film world. I said, well, this is a good business. Yeah. So I ended up, you know, things just sort of happened from that, that morphed in doing that film, and then I did Fast Times at Ridgemont High shortly after that, mm -hmm. with Cameron Crowe, who would come down to see me perform at a gig uh, with David Geffen and um, Irving Azoff at the time. And that's sort of how I connected with David, who was a big fan. And, and then I signed with his music company and uh, we had a good run yeah yeah and that's that see that's where i mean that's where magic begins when you have those type of people that look at you and say i really believe in you yeah and it they give does you a break because you need a break you know yeah, and that, everyone that needs a break it doesn't mean you're going to be successful immediately no, but no. it definitely you know i'd already you know at that point um i was young but i'd already put in the years of like you know from the age of 13 to you know 19 20 of just kicking in clubs and writing songs and they were terrible and uh, just you know <laughs> but, but 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 it was a growing experience sleeping on floors sleeping, and that's what I was going to ask you as you got old as you're getting as you age and as you have relationships and marriages and children and things like that does it become easier to Me personally, to do I have all those people, things? People. <laughs> people. Yes. I know, I'm people joking. and this is the uh, proverbial uh, yeah, we. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, do you get does it, do you find it easier to write for write music for others as well as yourself do you find that there are more places to pull from or do you find that you're less capable because I know people that, that have done what you do and they burn out pretty quickly because they don't have the ability to keep morphing themselves and see other people's visions and feel and emote the, and create the emotions necessary honestly that's never happened to me yet uh, See, and I, that's, I, that's I always thought by yeah. this time, you know, well, I, am I going to be one of those people that get stuck in time and like that? With, uh, and thinking, well, that music of that time or times was the uh, was the best music, and what's going on today is rubbish. Well, you know, listen, they were rubbish. It was rubbish back then, but yeah. I do think there's tremendous great things in music today. There's some. I mean, I listen to a lot more new things. I don't. I don't like getting trapped in what was. I love what I you know, love what the past music was. I mean, how can you not? You know. Well, no, and you have to love it because it's part of what your journey was too. Yes, yeah, the mean, DNA, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. It's what completes you. Um, but when it came to writing music for commercials, um, you did more <laughs> of that than you did before the movies and before television. You did commercial work in New York, didn't you? Well, I actually did it after the movies. It was oh, no interesting because I lived in L.A. for a while and I had done a good deal of films at the, in the 80s and then moved back to New York because I was kind of fed up with living in LA. I just really longed to be in a, a more inspiring sort of environment, which New York always was to me. And um, when I moved back there, uh, a mate of mine asked me if I'd like to write commercials and he said, there's some pretty good money in it. And I thought, well, do I really want to do that? And I said, oh, well, I'll give it a go. And then I went in and wrote a Breath Savers commercial and that was the first one I did and it went what they call final went on the air and and um, it just one after another and I was just uh, I, I was again surprised at how much money was made on Madison Avenue with just writing commercials and singing on them and uh, I had the good ability to change my voice around so everybody loved I could sound like you know Sting or I could sound like this one or that one if, right, the, if right. that was the flavor of the month so to speak or or David Byrne or whatever I remember doing the Pac-Man one thinking I was somewhere between David Byrne and um um, who else was it? Who was the guy that did? Um, uh, oh my God, Howard Jones, I think it was. Oh yeah, Howard Jones. Yeah. Well, but anyway. well but hold on. Now that you mentioned the Pac-Man commercial. Oh um, yeah, mine. Uh, Richard, do, do you happen to have that? Uh, could we play that oh Pac-Man commercial? Remember this, guys? I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the blue. You can do the Pac Man. With marshmallows and corn pops, Pac Man cereal's part of a good breakfast. See? 
And then the oh obesity God. rate went up by 14% because of that commercial. So you are re- re- responsible for That's the ch- mad. childhood diabetes. I kind of remember <laughs> when I write, wrote that song, and s- I remember writing in this loft in Soho, and it had to have it the next morning. And it was just, and then uh, I remember one of, the, one, of the, one of the clients who had met me said, boy, you seem so serious to have written such an upbeat song. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there was a lot of... Um, uh, well, we won't say. There was there were substances that could make you get excited <laughs> back in the day. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you yeah. never know. That that one might have been very uh, downbeat uh, at the time. <laughs> it was, um, yeah. It was crazy that whole commercial world. I I gave it up at one point because it was just getting in the way. You know, I mean, the money well, the money was incredible, but you know. Do you remember I, your close up commercial? The the, the I, oh, you just short of pornography. It was um, th- th- this one. People, if you remember this commercial, I don't know, Richard, if you mind playing that. Uh, <laughs> it was a couple that were kissing, just like a little, like you were saying yeah. hello to a bar mitzvah, and then all of a sudden they're they're at a, a company picnic after a few beers, and then they're at yeah. the honeymoon. <laughs> you know, yeah, this right. is all in a fifteen-second commercial. I was expecting her to go down, but never mind. No, they wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> they. Well, I guess this <laughs> was. It was, uh, it, was a, it was about. Here it is. If you want love? Get closer. Get close up in paste, tartar control, and gel. Is that, is that oh your God. voice at the end, too? No. <laughs> so I, wish. I thought we'd just embarrass you with money. a couple of your biggest hits. <laughs> well, yeah, that was interesting. You know, uh, Michael Bolton, actually, and myself did the backing vocal on that track. I remember that. Michael Bolton, wow. Yeah, because he did. Did he have hair back then? Like a lot of hair? Oh, still? yeah, he did. He's yeah. a nice bloke. Really nice guy. Uh, but we ended up, um, but yeah, it was crazy. And that, they, that commercial, I remember there was some controversy. They were going to pull it off the air. And. Um, and because it was so provocative looking, and um, they said, "Oh my God, the the tongue they almost they looked like they were you know, it tongue in each it other." And this was 1989, something like that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Murphy Brown was on. I remember yeah. that. And that, and and I think she <laughs> that show basically no, no, we want to keep that. She commercial. almost wore a burqa on that show. She was so covered up. <laughs> I mean, that was not that was a very yeah. conservative show. Was it? Oh I yeah, she was never. I didn't really watch TV, mate. You know, no, I did, how could I, you? I was, I was lucky to even see. The, I mean, I did see that commercial. On TV, close uh, up, one, close up commercial. Yeah, I saw it. I remember seeing it. Yeah, it was a lot, I mean, I did a, quite a few of them during those couple of years, but it was getting in the way to commercial stuff. Is Not there's anything I, wrong with it. But bad, Richard, is it bad that I remember commercials? That means I was home a lot. <laughs> and that's yeah, that's good. What's your favorite song? Oh, that close up commercial kills well, me. Well, you're from the north of. You're Ups, in, you're I'm, from, I'm from York, right? yeah. I'm a couple hop and skips from Niagara Falls, so oh, it's, right, uh, okay. I'm just one bucket away from a, a daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that there you close. Go. Well, we're just about to go to break. Um, I want to play this song. This is your new song called, actually, it's 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 off your new album, Pop Goes the Goth Cave. But it's called Clone the Method. And I want to listen to this at least halfway through before we break into the commercial. If that's okay with you, Richard. Cool. Anything you want to tell me about this song? Um, yeah, it's basically about cloning, and um, I wrote it for a TV, sh- a BBC America show called Orphan Black. Oh, my one of my favorite. We just watched it yesterday. Brilliant, brilliant show. She She's has a amazing. boy brother, boy sister now. <laughs> yeah, Tatiana is brilliant. Yeah, she is. But anyway. Here we go. Be my tongue when I can't speak the right words. Be my touch when I can't feel the real world. Be my clone in my lost soul. Be my perfect 
and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. I lost four and a half inches on my weight. I went down two loops on my belt. I've lost 10 pounds. Hi, I'm Michael Carson, America's fitness coach. Here to teach you how to burn body fat with every meal in only seconds a day. Fit in Seconds is a video workout program designed to accelerate your metabolism, resulting in burning fat with every meal. My Fit in Seconds video workouts will train your metabolism to use food as fuel, not as storage. With Fit in Seconds, I lost 27 pounds and 5 inches off my waistline. It's time to get Fit in Seconds. Exactly 25 years ago, the United States welcomed 54 million individuals with disabilities into the workforce. And today, even more opportunities exist. Hi, my name is Dan Jamal Cooper, and I specialize in job placement for individuals with disabilities. I advise on laws, employee rights, and regulations for disabled workers. Meet Rick and Amber Boggs, a visually impaired couple who don't allow their disability to overcome their drive to create jobs for the community. Dan Juma has been an integral part of our business success, and I believe he is an asset to any business or individual. Together, we can empower your community and enrich your business. So remember, when it comes to making your business work, make the change today. The Disability Awareness Experts. Hi, this is Shalon Douglas inviting you to join us every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, to demo your startup on air with the Pitch Live to Win syndicated digital broadcasting show. Join us as we share real conversations from real industry experts within the tech, education, media, and entertainment industries for your chance to win opportunities that will gain you access to resources, exposure, and capital. So remember to tune in to the Pitch Live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or watch us and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality broadcast handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Rhonda Ray, inviting you to join us every Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, for Hot Chicks Live. Join us as we discuss the latest fashion, entertainment, sports, and more. So don't forget to tune in to Hot Chicks Live every Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio, or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. I see innocence knocked out, makes my skin crawl, I feel the rage and my soul starts spinning. I see evil like a cancer, but we get when in doubt, I burn it out, that's why I was born. I'm a natural baby, I'm a natural baby, I'm a natural, natural, natural baby. We are back. You are listening to See It Clearly. I'm your host, Michael Carson, and that song is from Untame the Songs. It's called Killer Head, and I gotta, I gotta know a little bit more about this song. It's, it's subtle, like a Nine Inch Nails meets Jack White meets Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> Three Eleven. It's, I mean, it's a really good song. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love that kind of stuff, and I just sort of, I, I just wrote it, and it ended up being in all these TV shows from. Vampire Diaries to this one and that one and um, it, yeah it's a, it, it's got a, it, it just was fun to do it you know it's great I mean, for 
fitness classes. It's great for working out. Mm-hmm. It's great for driving at nighttime with the windows down. It's just this, it's just got that. It's, it's, yeah, it's killer head. It's a CSI <laughs> type of song, <laughs> Jerry. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of you know, it's pretty much about. Uh, and the interesting, interesting thing lyrically about the song is just about you know, it's much to do with the times we live in. You know, that we're we're not safe and we're you know, and we're you know killing one another and you know we 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 we, uh, we regret it but then we don't you know kind of numb it, to it so unfortunately. yeah exactly it's it, it very well put yeah well then on a lighter note we want to make sure that we cover you're doing something upcoming here on the 16th and 17th you're going to be in winchester virginia at the or state slasher con yeah, it's right outside of D.C. Actually, it's called a four, yeah, four states, hence four state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's um, I do a few of these things. They're fun because there's a lot of fans that come out that are into horror and pop culture. Oh, more than this, ever. More yeah, than ever. Unbelievable. I do a lot of these Comic Con things where I show up and perform. I do you know sign autographs and meet fans in the day and then pack out a you know massive ballroom. Uh, you know, two thousand people and it's. It's really cool. Well, to know more about that, you can go to gtommac.com. That's gtommac.com. And also you're on a, on a site called roundhillmusic.com. And it's a, it's a real interesting group um, that I'd like to just talk. Well, it's a record label yeah. slash music publishing company ran by two highly successful, um, Richard Rowe, who was the former CEO of Sony Music, and um, Neil Gillis, who was a former head of uh, Warner Chapel Music. And both of them just, I had work, had the great pleasure of working with them early on, and they came together and formed this very unique company, uh, an independent company, but they've proven to be quite highly successful. They actually bought uh, early, some early Beatles catalog and that kind of stuff from the oh, publishing wow. side of things. And asked me to, you know, if I'd be interested in signing with them about a year ago, and so we have. And it's been a great run, great, great people to work with because they get, mu- they're all about the music, yeah. and they're about the business, but they're about the business of making the music happen. And so. it seems like from what I read on the in, on the website that they have a, you know, they're about making sure you make money from your product too, not just yeah. being fleeced, which is what's going well, on in a lot of places these days. We all know what world we live in today, with you know, with music not. Yeah. You sort of dropping off the economy class um, of what you know, <laughs> there, there are a lot of re- uh, least Bentleys that are being <laughs> repossessed around the town. Let's put it that way. I should say put down to economy class, but right. it's really yeah. It's it, it, there's a that's a whole other conversation. But it's um, I'm a big supporter of like all m- the, in what we do. No matter who you are, we should be mm-hmm. making the the money that we deserve. You know, I mean. Right. It'll all get figured out. I mean, I'm not say, saying that streaming and all that stuff isn't good. I think it's, you know, it has its place. You certainly don't make the kind of money from streaming that you well, do. Well, what they're trying to sell it to you now is that it's creating your brand. So right. you're not making money off, per se, the actual tune itself, but it's creating your brand. So you Absolutely. Can, you can be able to have sponsorship and, and demand a higher quote for whatever yeah. that you're doing I'm in the future. I'm all about that. And hey, uh, I- if that's the trend, then we have to go with the trend. We can't, um, can't I've been doing it. that for a while now because yeah. I underst- I saw it coming and I said, you know what? I'm not going to get stuck in like, oh, my God, complain about this. And that's – it's not going to go back. No. It's no. going to go forward and you just have to figure it It'll out. It'll be right. different from what it is now, <laughs> it's not gonna, but it's not going back. Yeah. Although yeah. people are collecting more vinyl and they're, they're threatening to bring cassette tapes back, but that's more <laughs> of a, a niche kitsch market that's – Yeah, I think that is. They're just looking vinyl is a pretty valid – you know, and magnetic it's tape, It's a though. cool thing to have, and I think... Uh, well, there's valid validity to the sound, mm-hmm. you know, but not cassettes. Absolutely. <laughs> cassettes were hissy. Oh. They just didn't sound good. And rewind, rewind, uh, rewind, rewind. Yeah. Is that the spot? That's no, not the I spot. Used Is that the spot? Ah, too far, too far. Ah, whatever. But, uh, but getting back to, to your, your songwriting, um, a lot of soundtracks that you've done, and one of them being Lost Boys. Mm. Uh, Lost Boys and being the, the Halloween season, you actually just did a, a Lost Boys... Fun- a fun- a funeral, a um, cemetery performance, um, and screening the Lost Boys, and actually debuting the song that we just played. Tell me about that. That uh, uh, how that it was. It was in Long Beach, yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and it was like I don't know. We had a few thousand people. It's like four thousand, I think. Yeah, yeah, four thousand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. It was just a lot. <laughs> but we performed, uh, my, my band and myself, and uh, we did a good hour and twenty minute show, and then we showed the movie Lost Boys after, which we'd never done before. Yeah. And uh, it was so much fun. It was a very warm summer night, and 
this hillside look of, of, of the cemetery came down almost like an amphitheater, almost like a, a mini Hollywood bowl, or, if you will. It was massive, but it was really... Uh, <laughs> and there you can really kill, because everyone's <laughs> they're dead now. Like I know. Past. People sit, <laughs> put their blankets out over yeah. gravestones and what have you. It was pretty amazing, actually. It was great fun. Yeah. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, Lost Boys came out in 1987, and it's somewhat of a cult following, especially this time of year. Yeah. You know, it just... It, has had it and any time of year by the way well in in cry little sister the song that you wrote for the movie has been covered by 20 plus different artists yeah. um over the years you've even covered it um several I've covered times covered myself yeah i hope you gave yourself well, the proper I've covered uh, myself royalty for what, true blood i guess it was <laughs> yeah something like <laughs> Did that a different version of it yeah but i've never heard you do an acoustic version of oh, yeah. uh, cry little sister i Would do it so i do it I, I i've done it on radio quite a few times and it's fun to do good do you need some more water it's a whole no i'm good because I would get Just you some. Make sure what. How would you feel about doing uh, a little bit right here? I would feel like doing it. All right, we're well,
chain me, sister. Love is with your brother. GTOMMAC.com for more information. It's never easy that. singing that song wow. this time of day. I was going to say that is some mm. power. And you know what? I think <laughs> of Roger Daltrey when I watch you do that because I know that you guys have worked together. You've actually produced and written his albums and albums in, his pa in the past. And uh, there's The crazy just thing was with Roger uh, and Lost Boys, he actually did a cover of Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, but I didn't know him that. Ah. I, it, as a, it's at the end of the movie and it's on the soundtrack. But we didn't meet till years later, and it was um, quite, kind of strange how it all happened because Robert Plant's daughter, Carmen, used to play Cry Little Sister in her room over and over again, according <laughs> to Robert. And he got a hold of me, and that's how I met Robert and worked with Robert uh, Plant. Mm -hmm. And then, then they're managed by the same people. And Roger Daltrey heard what I was doing with Robert and heard other things I was doing. And lo and behold, we ended up writing and producing an album for him as well. Yeah, yeah. and Roger's very mm -hmm. fond of you. And uh, he's not fond of a lot of people when it comes in that regard. I mean, you are someone that he just trusts, and he sees you as a, as a chameleon and a morphability. And you hear his voice, and that's the one thing that only Peter Townsend has been able to really do is, yeah. is feel his voice. And Roger is the most incredible interpreter of songs. It's just yeah. uh, incredible. I mean, there's nobody besides... Aretha is probably the only person I know that can take a song and turn it inside out and make everybody feel like, oh my God, somebody can own it that well, you know. Yeah. And Roger does that, you know. He does it in a way that's mm. it's um, it's remarkable. I mean, obviously, even in, in a Aretha Franklin, fashion. by the way, for those people out there who don't know who Aretha it, is, yeah, Aretha and Franklin. You should know who Aretha Franklin is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we sh yeah, just look. You can Google that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you actually, can. There should be on YouTube as well. Did you work with Aretha? Have you ever, ever, have no, you? God. What a dream that'd be. No. Yeah, she's just, you know, God, come on. That's the... That's the top of the top. That's but it's, yeah, uh, it just doesn't get any better. No, I think that she's... <laughs> and she's still got it, too, apparently. Unbelievable. Yeah. She's made of the real stuff. That's all I can say. Well, we're about to go to a break. I want to mm. um, introduce the song. This is From Thou Shalt Not Fall. And this is You Are. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, good. I really like this one. And, and you are a great guest. I hope you keep that guitar through the break because I want to ask you to do one more when we come back. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. Excellent. We'll be right back. You listen to See It Clearly. I'm your host, Michael Carson. Once again, you can go to uh, gtommac.com, and also you'll be able to see him live in Winchester, Virginia at the Four State Slasher Con, Friday 16th and 17th. But we're going to be right back. What is blind, the heart is true to find. That's what you Empty when you love times when life's redemption's not enough, as if there was somebody watching over me, as faithless as I am, it's clear. In what you are. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's 
hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. I lost four and a half inches on my weight. I went down two loops on my belt. I've lost 10 pounds. Hi, I'm Michael Carson, America's fitness coach. Here to teach you how to burn body fat with every meal in only seconds a day. Fit in Seconds is a video workout program designed to accelerate your metabolism, resulting in burning fat with every meal. My Fit in Seconds video workouts will train your metabolism to use food as fuel, not as storage. With Fit in Seconds, I lost 27 pounds and 5 inches off my waistline. It's time to get Fit in Seconds. Hi, this is Shalon Douglas inviting you to join us every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, to demo your startup on air with a Pitch Live to Win syndicated digital broadcasting show. Join us as we share real conversations from real industry experts within the tech, education, media, and entertainment industries for your chance to win opportunities that will gain you access to resources, exposure, and capital. So remember to tune in to the Pitch Live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B Live 365, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or watch us and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality broadcast handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Starter Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio r and Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Here we are back at See It Clearly with the production version from the actual film, The yeah. Lost Boys. I, you know, I, I've always loved the song, but I think I prefer the acoustic now. It's just got such a... Well, I was in the room, too. It's like you can feel the strings twanging and the, uh, the vibration of the wood of the guitar is like... Uh, it's a whole different experience. Yeah. It's crazy. I wrote it on piano and um, Quite a Little Sister. And then, you know, later on, just started to do an acoustic version of it. And when I play it live, when I do play it acoustically live people go it definitely is a connecting piece of music and it, it has there's i don't know there's some there's more passion to it in a way that feels personal to me it's, yeah. uh, it, it has i mean it works both ways yeah <laughs> it's, it i'm not yeah, taking away from any of the any of the two it's funny when i did the, the production on cradle sister for lost boys the record label um, which was atlantic which was the soundtrack label at the time they just didn't, they, Joel, everybody loved what it sounded like, and they just couldn't figure, because there was a thought of maybe we release it as a single, and it was, mind you, I was the most unknown artist on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you had In Excess, you had Echo and the Bunny Man, and that's about. And that's when they were at their height, too. I mean, this was, yeah, 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 oh yeah. And um, so, um, <clears throat> the record label wanted to get somebody else to sing it, and to redo the song, like, a, you know, to be more along the lines of a, you know, uh, whatever the fa the hair band fashion of the right, time, you right. know, something like that. It was, like, it was that. like pop rock. Yeah, yeah, you know, Motley Crue or something, which I love, you know, but, um, but Joel and producer, Joel Schumacher, the director, and Richard Donner, the producer, just said, there's just no way anybody else is doing this. You're the voice of this movie, and w this is got to be your product just production and but everybody the record label was saying the production was sounded too futuristic it didn't sound like the 80s per se and i'm going like well is that a compliment or is that <laughs> are they slagging me you know yeah, yeah. and it's um, a tough one. but it was funny um we ended up just being a, I, I i didn't really care at that point i mean they were talking about having phil collins singing it they had it, you know. Uh, I mean, the list was long. Of, you yeah, know, Steve funny, Perry, I, I all could, these artists. I can see it. why they would want. They, they 
the, the thinking they want to use that voice that people recognize yeah, as of a course you know, it's all a marketing tool it's so silly when the song mm. obviously has lasted now 18 years is constantly being reproduced and redone well and we're going down regard. we're going down music story lane now yes we are <laughs> which there are many of no it's not even 18 years it's 28 years what am I talking about yeah. anyway you've done a lot more than that with regards to television shows and, and movies besides that movie as well and, and a song from Scrubs that you have which was a show that I loved that, uh, yeah was a pretty a fun cool show Right. Bill Lawrence uh, created a really cool. Would you mind doing there. doing a song that you yeah, did for I can that, do that. that show? Um, yeah, this was a song clo- kind of closed out the show actually, and uh, it was used a few different times. And um, it's called Half, and um, it was from my G Tar Mac album that came out in around 2000, but I ended up being used in that show six years later. Mm-hmm. So For the deluxe life and the trump card dream It could be wonderful If you only knew what you're wishing for Is non-refundable Gotta fix on someone with all that And it's typical They're never reachable They're only half the page of the story you are Only half a day to your 24 hour Like a masquerade in the Mardi Gras What a drag to get half the truth and the lame alibi Why take half the moon when you could have the sky You get half his game and the rest is gone He lives that slow burn world in the higher hills Where there's no such thing as reality check on any given drill When you're so convenient he says he does but he never will Give you the love devil He's only high Mardi Gras Hey yeah, he's only half the page Only half a day Like a masquerade in the Mardi Gras What a jack to get half the truth Take half the moon when you could have the sky You get half his game and the rest is gone Only half a clue Hey, what's up with you? Better things to do You know it's, I it's shortened it up a bit. <laughs> well, and, 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 but the lyrics in your songs are what drive so much of it too. It's not just the musicality of it. There, are, I mean, the lyrics are are something that that sets it apart because there's a lot of repetitive, crappy lyrics that are out in the world right now that you hear. Ooh, baby. Yeah, there's still. Ooh, ah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's more like sounds and 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 gas pains, I think, than people are actually using lyrics these days. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something to simplicity and things. You know, um, I hear s- some of the new sort of pop hip hoppy things that I go wow the lyrics are just uh, you know like the thing that Neo did with um, um, you know She Knows that song uh, pardon the, 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 with, with, with uh, oh god why am I they, you know the Latin dude you know oh um, uh, Pitbull Pitbull yeah. Yeah, yeah and I I listen to that I'm going like you know that's an actually clever whole concept you know I I'm kind of like I'm working for the weekend kind of thing. Right. I don't got you know it's all and it's really clever the way it was all put together. So there are things that are that can seem on the surface like who cares the lyrics what is that you know but I think there's some clever stuff out there among all the 
rubbish, you know. And you've so worked with Ice Cube. I mean, you've done. I did, yeah. You've worked in hip hop. What did you do with Ice Cube? I, I uh, there was a film called The Players Club, in which he, um, well, it happened through a music supervisor named Frank Fitzpatrick, who uh, worked on all of Cube's movies. And he was looking for an opening song for a movie, uh, for his film, The Players Club, which is, by the way, I mean, it, you know, you should pick this up or, you know, download it. It's <laughs> yeah, or steal it off However the you do somewhere. it, um, <laughs> yeah, it do it's brilliant. Days. It's an incredible um, <laughs> film, um, just really well crafted as a right in the writing and and cube wrote it and he co-wrote it and uh, and he directed it so anyway i co i come in, you know i come into the picture by uh, frank fitzpatrick he said hey you want to take a shot at writing the, the main song to this film and you said and he yeah. said and by the way there are 30 <laughs> other people uh, doing this i said well sure i'll give it a go and oh, wow. uh, out of the 30 other some songs he picked cube picked my song and so at so the time i mean i, I so was you had to kill a lot of people yeah, well, <laughs> listen, you know, I'm you up against some of the best hip hop people in the business. But anyway, what happened? I come back. I'm in New York. I went back to New York. I just moved to LA at that point for the second time, and I'm back in New York. And I put it down, bringing some of my pals to sing on it with me, and and I send it out, and I and I get a call from Frank and Cube saying, "Hey, this is brilliant. Can you get back out here?" And and at this point, Cube thinks I'm black. <laughs> you know, because he doesn't really know. and then I show up and it's like uh, oh okay brother from another mother you, know? <laughs> you might need some air man you so, look a little pale <laughs> oh man but anyway we ended up getting Casey and Jojo uh, to sing oh, yeah. the track and that was really fantastic because those guys I, I adore yeah yeah fantastic and um so yeah, we ended up you know the track we did ended up in the movie and well know. and in other uh, rappers that you've worked with you've even got an Emmy with with a, a Grammy rather an Emmy that would be a television thing you, you could you probably have those as well but a Grammy with I don't M &M. have any Emmys but M and M I can see where you were going with the Emmy M yeah M &M. No. <laughs> Grammy M &M. help me mommy <laughs> I'm having a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was for um, a song called "You're Never Over," which he um, sampled me and on and was. That was fantastic, just to be able to. This is uh, his rehab be album. I in think it was called. World with him, it's on a um, recovery album. Recovery album, yeah. rehab. That's a which is one of the biggest rel records he's ever made. And yeah. it's such a brilliant album. The song he did with Rihanna. debuted at number one, I think, on the yeah. on the tracks. Yeah, it was it, it was really odd. I mean, interesting, not odd, but an interesting thing happened one morning. I have a now ten year old son. When that album came out, I just have I was taking him to school one morning. I literally get in the car and I had on I can't remember what radio station, but um, wasn't wasn't the way. And it came <laughs> on my song. They were pre pre previewing um, um, some of the songs from the album, and um, so you never over came on. And I'm going like, wow, what are the odds of that? And I said, Quinn, your dad's on the radio right now. <laughs> That is With Eminem, uh, it was pretty awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. How are we doing? We're getting very close to the end. I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, you have a, a movie that will be coming out that you're the music supervisor for, Grey Lady. Yeah, I did the main song. I wrote the song, and uh, uh, the main song called Eyes on the Prize, Eye on the Prize. And I'm in the movie actually performing that song. Oh, excellent. Um, it's a really cool little movie. It was shot in Boston and in Nant on the island of Nantucket. I did my scene on the island of Nantucket in sort of a festival kind of setting. And, um, yeah, good cast. Eric Dane from Grey's Anatomy and um, mm -hmm. can't remember everybody else. I know, it's a lot of cast. All cast. great, good cast. You know, it's a thriller and, and uh, an directed a a by AMC John Shea. An AMC TV series that you just were, were on. It's a Halt and Catch Fire, which they, uh, they're they in their second yeah, year. Yeah, that was cool. That's a great show. And I, you're on that as I well. I was so pleased. Between that and uh, Eastbound and Down, that I closed out the season of that a couple of years ago. You spelled it down? Yeah, oh, yeah. I love, love that, that show. show. I'm have to go I, back which episode. When I got that call, I told my publisher, I don't care, I'll do it for free. Oh, I love that show. <laughs> That's a great show. Not really. Yeah. Uh, but, no, not for free. But, it's a uh, great show, though. But, it, you know, you have that love for something. But I was watching Halt and Catch Fire, and going, wow, what a cool concept. And then they closed out the season with not only one of my songs, but two songs of mine. Wow. Yeah, Be Almost Famous and um, Smile for the Camera. Well, if you want to see... The man in person. You can go to Winchester, Virginia, to the Four State Slasher Con this Friday, the 16th and 17th, right outside of Washington. You said? Yes, yeah, outside, outside of DC. Outside yeah, of DC. Well DC. And you can also go to gtommack.com for any future dates and information on and where to purchase, as well as iTunes. You go to yeah. gtommack and you can get almost all your albums. I was, yeah. I was checking. I buy and clone the method. Go out and 
download that song. Yeah, clone so the I'm method. Really proud of it. I want you to see it on YouTube. Go to clone uh, on YouTube and clone the method, and you will. The video is fantastic. Yeah, clone the method. You're gonna want these jackets that that you're wearing. They're just outstanding. But we're closing out the show today with uh, "Under Your Skin." Thou shalt not fall is the album, and it's G Time Mac is the artist, and we are and see it clearly. Thank you so much for being here. We'll be back here next week at 1 p.m. Thank Sit. you, Michael. sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk.